I, if someone asked me if they were going to buy our ranch, if we sold it, is it haunted? I would 100% say yes. That's my friend CJ, who's talked about some scary things that have happened in his life on the show before. We've, we've seen figures walking along the river over the years, and, and their clothing does not look from this time period. I've seen a man on horseback, and he looked like he was in a blue uniform. He had a white straw hat. He was sitting on this horse, and uh, he just stared at me for a minute, and then he, he rode over the edge. Uh, we, we went and looked for him. My dad went and looked for him, and there, there was nobody there. I'm, and there's parts of the ranch where you always feel like someone's watching you. On this episode of That Doesn't Happen Every Day, in which we interview everyday people about things that don't normally happen every day, we hear more stories from my friend C.J. Young, who grew up on a ranch in south-central Wyoming where a lot of weird things happened. The the ranch in general has had weird things happen on it over the years, and I can't quite say why. It abuts up against the old historic Fort Steele, which was an army fort to protect um, the railroad workers and settlers and folks in the area. There were a lot of people that they would camp and stay on the property waiting to cross the river. There were a lot of drownings there. And then there was also a town, a company town called, um, we call it Thai Town. And there's a whole old ghost town out there, uh, multiple buildings still left. It's really like walking back through time. I've been to both the ruins of Fort Fred Steele and Thai Town, which are in fact right by CJ's family ranch. And like a lot of ranches in Wyoming and across the West, it is very, very far from towns or any places where there are a lot of people. There's um, one, one main pasture in particular. You get a sense of foreboding. I, I almost, almost say evil. Uh, you almost get a sense of a wrongness to the location. What makes it even weirder is it's a beautiful pasture. It's one of the prettiest pastures on the ranch. It's right along the river. There's trees all around it, cottonwoods, willows, but it's had mysterious things through our history happen there. I remember when I was a young kid, I was home with my mom. My aunt was there and my younger brother, and they noticed this truck parked in the pasture. You could see it from the house. You can see the kind of the entrance to this pasture. And my mom got binoculars and was looking at this person. And she noticed the person had a scoped rifle and was looking back at her. And so we hid in the house and she called the sheriff's department and the sheriff's department came out and they, they got this person. And this person was hiding in the willows and they, they, they had guns and they called him to come out and drop the rifle. Turns out it was someone who had committed murder in another area and had traveled down the interstate got off that exit, came to that pasture, don't know why. They didn't apparently know why. They told the deputies. They just thought it was a place to stop and and sit a while and think. And they just sat in that pasture. And so that that was the first memory I had of something weird happening there. You know, other strange things. I remember one time my brother and I were working on the property. And I always remember we came, we were walking through this fenced area. And there were a pair of shoes, perfect pair of shoes sitting in this clearing like someone had taken off not one, but both their shoes. Um, they were actually like boots, like a small boot. And they, they put them right there and there was nobody there. It, there was, it was the bizarrest thing. It was so weird because why would you just take your boots off? You know, maybe somebody was hunting or fishing and switched to waders. That's what we thought. It was like, okay, maybe someone was fishing, took off their shoes and put on waders, forgot where they left their shoes and here are their shoes. But I remember it being really weird because it was none of ours. And this was, a good little bit in from the river. So it was, it was just weird. But kind of the culmination of the weirdness for my brother and I, and we were building berms in that pasture. I think I was 15 or 16. It was dusk. It was uh, close to evening. My brother and I had shovels. We were, you know, he'd dump the dirt and we're kind of smoothing it, moving it around. And um, I don't know if it was my younger brother or I that first noticed it, but we started noticing there was something in the willows along the edge of the pasture, and it was kind of a sh- an outline, a shade in the in the willows. And I, but I, I distinctly remember these eyes. There were these yellow eyes, and it was kind of animalistic, kind of but not. Um, looked like it kind of stood up a little bit, maybe like a, a bear or an animal standing up or a person hunched over. And it's it would move it, 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 as you'd move around the pasture. It would move, but it moved faster than anything could or should. It, it, it didn't make sense. It was not normal how it moved. You, you would see, see a something there that you couldn't quite figure out what it was or even get a full fix on it. And it would go foof and it would move quick. And you'd see willows move like a, like a flutter. Nothing moves that fast. It's not, I, I know deer. I grew up on the ranch. I knew deer. We have dogs. 
cats. I've, I've been stalked by a mountain lion. I've hunted my whole life. This was not anything I'd ever recognized or seen. And my brother noticed it too. And we, we started talking about it and it started kind of scaring us. You, you could feel this aura of fear building and it, and it started low of this isn't right. And it felt threatening. It felt dark or negative. And we, we went up to the tractor a couple times to tell my dad and my daddy, you know, in the track, it's an old tractor. It's brah, 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 loud. And he's riding around doing stuff. And he's like, what are you talking about? You know, he's like, keep shoveling. Uh, we, we kept going and my brother and I, we were, first we were working apart and then we started working next to each other. And I don't remember what happened, but at some point it got closer and, and we both started to panic and we both started tearing up and started getting really like, like I have to get out of here. And it, it, it moved a little closer when my brother and I, we ran out of that pasture. There was no truck or anything. We ran all the way back to the house. And I, I mean, we must have run a quarter of a mile and there were tears in our eyes. This thing, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. We, we got to the house and we told my mom and, and my mom, the skeptic is like, oh, honey, it was a mountain lion. There was a mountain lion in there. And uh, so we, my dad came back. He rode the tractor back. He's like, yeah, I look around. You guys are gone. Where'd you go? And we're like, dad, there was this thing. And he's like, there's no thing. And he was like, well, years later, my dad was in that pasture by himself and he admits that he thinks he saw something in the willows that he couldn't figure out what it was and that it, it freaked him out. He didn't say much about it, but he, he does admit there's something up there and that it seems weird and it seems hostile. And um, my brother and I, we avoided that pasture like the plague. The pasture problems didn't end there, though. This was a couple of years after that story I just told you. We were going up to Hay, um, the llamas. And, uh, we get up there and we back the back of this pickup truck up. We, you had the hay bale in there and you need to step in the back of the bed of the truck with your pitchfork and throw a couple flakes in. One of us, we were both up there and I don't remember who said it, but one of us was like, it's back. We just knew it. And it was there. It was like, you knew it was there. It was like your, your, your body and your soul recognized this thing, this dark thing had returned. It, we're, we're throwing, um, hay in and we're kind of doing the job quickly and um, cause you know, we're, we're, we're good little soldiers falling waters. Those, those llamas needed, Hey, we were going to get them. Hey, but we were really freaking out. It made a noise. It screamed. It was, it sounded like a person screaming like a woman. It was high pitched. I mean, I remember it hurt my ears. Like it, the, the volume of it was deafening. And it just, even the llamas bucked, like they bucked up on all fours and started running around. And my brother and I were just, it was like the panic came back. It was like years later in that pasture, except this time we had a truck. And so we both jump out of the thing and get in the truck and woof, go flying down the road and got out of there. And we said, we told our dad, we said, we're not going to take care of him there anymore. You got to move him. We're not going to do it. And he, you know, he did. Cause I think he knew there was something weird up there to this day. I want to go back and visit the family ranch. The pasture creeps me out. I would not go there at night ever, ever. I would be hesitant to walk around by myself in daytime. I, the few times I've had to go there for um, checking fences, I only would do it armed. Um, I would carry a gun with me. Um, somewhat of a secure, like, what am I going to do? Shoot this mysterious thing with black eye or yellow eyes. And I don't even know what that is, but there's a little bit of sense of security in carrying that firearm. And, uh, but that's the threat you feel by it. And I've had cousins and friends be like, this place feels, does this place feel weird to you? They've said that to me. And uh, I'm like, yeah. And I don't tell them the stories usually. I usually don't. Because it's not just that pasture. That pasture is just the most un unnerving part. We have a barn. I've never experienced it, but both my dad and brother have had, when they're bending over looking for stuff, somebody whispers in their ear. Uh, uh, a person asks them questions or says their name. And they both experienced it. And my, and my dad's a medical doctor. He's a pretty scientific guy. He's not prone to flights of fancy. Um, we have a chicken coop that we built is new. It's not old. We built it. And, uh, we had this experience where, um, the chickens were long dead, killed by a Fox and it still had a light. And my dad kept noticing at nighttime that the light in the chicken coop was on. And he would, he was bug my brother and I would turn that light off. I don't pay for the power out there. And I remember my cousin was living with us at the time. My, my dad's uh, a nephew. He was the oldest, my oldest cousin. He was staying with us. 
And we kept swearing to my dad, yeah, we haven't been over there. We haven't been over there. Well, so finally my dad's like, someone's over there turning that light on. He's like, because the railroad also runs right by our property, the Union Pacific line, the old transcontinental line. And he says, um, I, I wonder if there's a hobo or somebody that's sneaking in and living there. You know, we go, my cousin, my brother and I, my dad, four guys armed to the teeth, AR, we had a shotgun. We go over to this chicken coop. There's no one there. And we're like, well, this is weird. Maybe he's taken off in the woods. We're walking back to the house. And as we're walking back, I remember my cousin, he looks, he's like, Uncle Charlie, the light's on. And we took around and my dad, I remember he, it's the way he always reacts to weird things. He's just like, huh, that's weird. And so we walk back over there and that light bulb's on. And so we check again, we check around, there's nothing there. Happens again, Dean, one more time, next night, that light's on. The next morning, my dad went over and took the light bulb out. And, uh, just, well, there's no light bulbs, it's never come on again. I asked CJ why he thinks all this crazy stuff has happened on his ranch. He points out that the river, the fort, Thai town, the railroad, all of these things actually brought a lot of people through and to this area, even though it appears really desolate now. So it does make you wonder if maybe a lot more went on in this area than we know a lot about. There was also another incident in that pasture that kind of makes you wonder. And my dad had a, a big professional fencing company come. They fenced pastures everywhere. One of them, they had to fence through that area in that pasture. And I always remember the, the crew, it was like a three-man crew that did it. And they came up to get my dad and, and they were really startled. And they said, hey, we discovered a bunch of graves in this area where we're putting it. And, and you know, we, we can't, can't put a fence through a graveyard. And my dad's like, what are you talking about? There's no graves. And they took him up there. They took him to this pasture. And they took him and there were no graves. And these guys swore up and down that 20 minutes before that, they had been getting ready to put these posts in. And there were these several graves they had found with grave markers at the edge of the, the clearing. And they were spooked by it, my dad said. And they weren't there. They could not find him again. And, and they swore up and down that they found these graves. And they said it, it just really, it really disturbed them. And uh, they, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do the pasture. And they ended up not finishing part of that pasture because it freaked them out. And they're like, yeah, we're, we, you know, we'd rather not finish that part. And my dad's like, ah, that's okay. You know, it, it, was, it wasn't that critical. I, I love it. I love that ranch. But it, it, it is a very mysterious place that has weird things that happen. If you want, I'll take you there someday. <laughs> I wanted to thank CJ Young for being on my podcast again. In the description, I've posted two other episodes in which he shares very scary stories. One is called Teenage Tours of an Old Prison, in which he talks about giving tours of the old prison in Rollins, Wyoming, when he was a teenager. And another called When Your Pet Bison Gets Mutilated, about the time that CJ's family bison named Ralphie was found mutilated in a strange way out on that ranch. If you're thinking about moving to Wyoming and buying a ranch... Really? You, you think that's a good idea? <laughs> I'm not trying to scare anyone off, but holy cow. want to give a shout out to KHOL in Jackson, Wyoming, who play this show at 3.30 p.m. every Thursday. If you'd like to listen to it online, please do a search for That Doesn't Happen Every Day. Every day is two words in this case, and you should be able to listen to it on your podcast player. Please contact my email in the show's description if you would like to advertise on the show. Thank you so much for listening. I hope to have another one to you in two weeks. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.